Hi friends, this is Representative Sarah Vance of House District 31. I'm gonna give you a capital update. We just came off the house floor. It is, uh, let's see, 7.53. And uh, we have taken up the concurrence of the supplemental budget that came over from the Senate just today. And uh, we were there for quite some time in debates on uh, the merits of this bill. Now this is the supplemental that fills in the gaps in between the FY20 and the year 21 budget. So originally we sent this over to, uh, we passed this unit, well almost unanimously out of the House, sent it over to the Senate, and they sent it back with an additional 61 million. So that brings it to a total of 359 million unrestricted general funds. It uh, allows for 15 million to go to the COVID um, coronavirus funding. It has um, an additional money for cold climate research. It has 150,000 for rural ID implementation. It has um, 30 million of community assistance to uh, communities that are losing revenues from the lack of cruise ships. And uh, it has um, ability to accept federal dollars, lots of uh, good things like that. In addition to what I previously talked to you about, about being able to pay for uh, the wildfires, uh, money to go to the ferries. And this was uh, something that, you know, all of us wanted to support. But the interesting part about this bill is that Senate returned it to the House uh, with a poison pill. It, uh, we all know that we needed to access the Constitutional Budget Reserve, our savings account, in order to fill the gaps for funding on this, which we originally conceded to. But what they added this time was the reverse sweep. Now the reverse sweep takes three quarters of the body, as well as the, the CBR takes three quarters of a vote from the body. And uh, this is typically done with the operating budget. The operating budget funds government services through the for the year and they put it in the supplemental budget. And we asked, why is that necessary at this time? And so if you watch the House floor, uh, you would have seen that uh, there were many reasons why this had to happen now and, ha and pointing to the virus. But I contend that it does not. We would have happily passed this supplemental budget to provide the funding for Medicaid and the COVID virus and the fires and everything tonight if it did not have the reverse sweep. But this is something that they're doing to strong arm the voice of the minority, your representative, and so many others because it ends the conversation. If they have that vote from us now, they don't need our vote in the future. They only need our vote on um, a few things of concurrence of uh, governor's appointees, things like that. But as far as the operating budget, they only need a simple majority if they have the sweep. This is why I voted no, is because this was unnecessary political gamesmanship. There, uh, Jeremy, I wanna answer your question. A word on emergency early full PFD? There is no conversation about that that I'm hearing and this is why I, again, why I voted to no because of the reverse sweep is because I want to fight for you to have an early PFD. I want to fight for having a constitutional spending cap. And I would also like to have uh, the heartbeat bill. But we're not having conversations about the asks of all legislators. I'm here to fight for you. And I've heard your cries that you said, we need help now. We need help by having money to be able to pay our bills, to be able to buy groceries. And we would like some PFD money early because we understand the need. We are in unprecedented times. So uh, hopefully soon we will have a conversation that we can pass the sum supplemental budget out, out clean without the reverse sweep attached to it so that we can move on to, to passing out the operating budget and be able to get the work done for Alaskans. I'm willing to come to the table and reason together. But when I'm not even invited to come and partake uh, uh, at the table and not to have a conversation, that's when things go sideways.
all, all Alaskans should be represented and not dismissed. And that's what it feels like when they try to put this reverse sweep on before we even bring the operating budget back for concurrence. And that's the kind of gamesmanship that we have going on. Otherwise, I would, I would be here to support this supplemental budget and all of the things necessary. Now, with that, there, the governor already has $250 million from last year's sweep uh, that he can access. So he can prioritize the things that need to be funded in the supplemental that need to be paid out immediately, like Medicaid. Our providers need to have money right now because of the strain that is, is coming. They're trying to prepare for the virus. So uh, there is money, but what, what this sweet, uh, excuse me, the CBR vote that's being asked of at this, at this time is to make up the difference between 250 million and 359 million. Because remember last year, we already gave permission for the administration to access $250 million uh, on things like the supplemental. But with the fires and Medicaid and things like that, it got, uh, it got bigger. And now we definitely need to address uh, co more COVID virus funding and um, be able to, to implement that quickly for the people. So we are working on that. Uh, there, I saw that there's another case uh, active here in the state, and I just want to encourage you to follow the CDC guidelines and uh, be washing your hands frequently. If you are sick, please stay home. Uh, call your provider if you have questions or concerns. The state has implemented uh, a phone number that you can con call for any questions about the COVID virus or how to get services and you just simply dial 211. Very simple, easy to remember and have that available. Uh, but if you do feel like you will have symptoms, don't go into the doctor or the emergency room, but call them first. They're trying to keep the contact minimal and uh, take advantage of telehealth if you have that available. That's also something that uh, the governor has signed into law that we can uh, utilize telehealth through insurance companies um, faster. The date uh, was moved up on that. We're trying to uh, be able to get uh, quicker testing available and the state is in constant conversation with the CDC to be able to get more resources here as more cases break out. So I encourage you to uh, self-quarantine, do social distancing as much as you possibly can to keep your family safe. The whole idea is to slow the spread so that our, um, our healthcare system is not overloaded by a lot of cases of people who have extreme uh, needs. You know, the, the seniors, the elderly, people with compromised immune systems need to take extra care during this time. If people have traveled outside of the state, they need to self-quarantine for 14 days because that's where the contract, the spread is coming through is traveling outside. So small business owners, I'm glad you asked. We've had a lot of phone calls of small business owners asking how they can have relief through the SBA loans. So yesterday, Governor Dunleavy did put in a request to the federal government for that. It is in process. So. Uh, you know, please be patient on that. The reason that that was not asked earlier is that a lot of these things had to, uh, we couldn't ask for until we had active cases in the state. So it's just um, that we're getting the ball rolling of one thing in front of the other and we're working to address the problems as quickly as possible. So I encourage you, you know, you can go to, we have a coronavirus.alaska.gov that's a website with a state that keeps you informed on the news releases, on information about the virus and what you can do to stay healthy and prepare your family. Again, you can call the phone number that's 211 to be able to get information and they do referrals as well to um, you know any um, health and social services or, or services that you may need. But um, you know, figuring out a plan of helping your neighbors if uh, neighbors do contract uh, the virus, you know, 
checking in on them every once in a while through a phone call if if they need supplies that you can drop it at their door and not you know on their doorstop and, and and knock on the door and just be there for them and and this is a time that our community can pull together like never for before and support each other and um and really have a time of coming closer together so thank you for watching and uh, we are ha meeting on the house floor tomorrow at 10:30. usually we uh, meet monday wednesday friday but we have been meeting uh, on the house floor every day this week because we are trying to get the work of alaska done quickly so that we can get back home to our families uh, so uh, you know take those precautions and remember to wash your hands and stay safe so Thanks again and, um, you know, stay healthy. Bye, friends.